चान बाला भागिरी धरता यशोदन धन प्रचन रंजना यशोदन धन प्रचन रंजना यमुन तेरा चाहरी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कोर प्रेम नंदे हरि बो So where are we? All right, you remember? <laughs> Chama, you are not here. You don't know. Last night we studied. Oh. Okay. Om Purnam Adapurnam Idam Purnat Purnam Mudachate. Purnasya Purnam Adhaya Purnam Eva Vasishyate Can you see okay? Yes? Okay. So Purnam, Purnam means complete. Purnam, Krishna is complete. Everything is there. And everything which comes from Krishna is also complete. So we were talking about this, how everything is complete. There's a complete arrangement in the world. Everything is provided for us. 
we don't have to go without anything. Water is provided, air is provided, land is provided, space is provided, everything is there. There's a complete arrangement. And Prabhupada gave some examples about completeness. We had some nice examples of how everything is complete. He talked about water, how there's oceans of water. The ocean is so full, but the ocean is all salt water, right? You cannot drink it. It's all salt water. But what happens is the clouds will evaporate the water. The water will be absorbed into the cloud. And then the water, the clouds will pass over the land and the water which is in the clouds will fall in the form of rain. Yes. And that rain, that is sweet water. Initially the water from the sea is salty, but by the arrangement of Krishna the water becomes sweet and it falls on the ground and comes down the mountains and we can drink this. The, the stream water, the river water. So that's an example of complete arrangement. And then Prabhupada gave another example about the, the, the woman, right? When she gives birth, a young baby cannot take anything, cannot eat anything, only thing it wants is milk and the mother's breast the milk flows from the breast, so it can feed the milk to the child. So that's the arrangement of Krishna. Mother doesn't do anything, it just happens that the milk flows from her breast because she has a love feeling for her child and it causes the milk to flow through her breast and she can feed her child. So Krishna arranges these things, completeness, the complete arrangement. Just like you have a field, you can grow rice one year, then next year you can grow rice again. And then next year you grow rice again. And for hundreds and hundreds of years people have been growing rice in the same fields. Or they grow wheat and they grow it, they grow and they harvest and then they, next year they grow it again. The nature arranges that you can continue to plant and grow. Everything is provided. So who is behind all of this, this perfect design there? The, there's a designer behind everything. Just like motor cars, somebody designed them. This building, somebody designed the building. <coughs> so the same way. Behind the material world, there is a designer, there is a person, <coughs> there is a creator, <coughs> right? So we were speaking about that, we were speaking about the, the Absolute, how the Lord is Absolute, everything is there. Let me see, where were we? We got up to here, right? We were, we were talking the human life. Human life is a ma complete manifestation, a complete manifestation of consciousness, right? Other forms of life, they have consciousness, but they don't have the complete consciousness. They have some consciousness. Animals have some consciousness. The tree has also some consciousness, but not much. But in the human life, you get complete consciousness. So, but you only get the human life after coming through all the different species of life. You come again to the human form of life. So then Prabhupada was talking about how there's a God, there is a God behind the world. But sometimes people say, no, there's nothing, there's only zero. They say there's no God. 
So <coughs> Prabhupada says, how could it be that there's no, that God is zero? No, he's complete and everything from him is complete also. And we give the example that Krishna plus everything is Krishna and Krishna minus everything is also Krishna. So if one is complete and if one is taken away then it becomes zero. But when you deal with Krishna, Krishna is absolute. So he remains. Let's see. If, if, if from the complete, from Krishna, you take the complete, you take away Krishna, then the complete remains. Krishna remains. So this is Prabhupada's example. Krishna can expand. He expands everywhere in everyone's heart, right? We were, I was asking you yesterday, how many super souls are here in the room? One. One, yes, one super soul. One super soul everywhere. That one Krishna is expanded <coughs> everywhere. <coughs> And Krishna eats, right? We offer everything to Krishna. If you offer it to me, you won't get it back. <laughs> but if you offer to Krishna, Krishna gives back. He will leave everything for you. He will get the prasadam. So this is Krishna. He will keep everything for you as prasadam. We make efforts to utilize the resources of nature to create a so-called complete life of sense enjoyment. Right? We make efforts. We're trying to make our life complete. We want everything to be complete. We try to utilize everything. You see? utilizing microphones, utilizing computers, everything, just for our sense enjoyment here, <laughs> you can say. But the illusory representation of completeness cannot fully satisfy us. Oh, Krishna. We want everything to be complete, but still we're not fully satisfied. Here you can see, can you see what's going on here? Huh? This is a burning gut. They take the dead bodies and they burn them. You can see there's a dead body there and they're putting the logs on, burning it. So. This is an example of incompleteness, incompleteness in our life. <coughs> you lose someone who is very dear to you. <coughs> you we lose people who we have a lot of feeling and love for. We're separated from them. We don't like it, we didn't want it, but we are forced, we cannot avoid it. So this is one experience of incompleteness in our life. We want to keep everyone with us, right? We want to keep all our loved ones, they should stay with us forever. They should never go. But how is it possible? It's not possible because this is the material world. So these things will happen. So how can the invocation of Sri Ishopanishad help us make our lives complete? What do we need to do? 
to make our lives complete we have to become <coughs> what? yeah we have to become attached to Krishna right we have to become attached to Krishna let's go back Prabhupada gives the example just like a big machine and there is a small screw the completeness of that small screw is to fit in the particular place then it has got value and if it is out of touch of the machine it has no value right you get so many things you know you get these screws different screws and this these computers so many screws one screw what is the good of it you know one microchip what what can you do with it but when you put it together and you put it in the computer then it can work it can do a lot of things so we are like that we're like the little screw we have to be connected to Krishna we have to be connected in all of our activities and when we're connected to Krishna then we have value but without that connection no value we are complete units so long we are attached to Krishna otherwise useless <laughs> Right? Well, no use. So we should be attached, we have to become attached to Krishna. Alright, so we spoke about this uh, Om Purnam Ada, the, that there's a person, there's a supreme personality of Godhead behind this world. This Om Purna, that this world is coming from, not coming from nothing, it's coming from a person, there's a creator, right? So we want to understand that. And then the nature of the spiritual potencies of the Supreme Person. With reference to Purnam Eva Vashishyate, meaning so many complete units come from Him but he remains complete balance. So many things are coming from Krishna, all the universes, but he is, re he is remaining the same, he's not changing. Just like you give birth to children, you give birth to so many children, you're still the same, right? They all came from you. <coughs> So many children all came, and you're still the same, you have not changed. So this is Krishna's potency, completeness, how so many things come, <coughs> you remain the complete balance. This is Krishna's spiritual potency. Then the nature of this world with examples, with reference to Purnamidam, complete nature of this world, complete nature. We spoke about the rain, and the water, and the breast, the milk coming from the breast of the mother. We reflect, reflected on experience is a feeling incomplete. You know, you feel incomplete. Maybe feeling of incompleteness. Just like the young woman has a love affair, right? And, and then when they break up, then she feels incomplete. Or the young man feels incomplete, you know. Oh, she's left me. <laughs> My heart's broken. Right? Incompleteness. That experience is there for people. So what can we draw which could help us to make our lives complete? We draw, we have to become attached to Krishna. We want to become attached to Krishna. Prabhupada said, 
all services in this world, whether social, political, communal, international, or even interplanetary, will remain incomplete until they are dovetailed with the complete whole. So, everything, doesn't matter what you're doing, social, political, interplanetary, it must be connected with Krishna. Then, all right, so that's the second lesson tonight. <coughs> We've got another one here. <coughs> Very old picture. Many devotees there. Famous devotees. Little girl on the shoulders, eh? <laughs> Sandra Swati. Okay, famous verse. You have to learn these two. The invocation, the Om Purnam, the Adab Purnamidam, and the Isavashyam Idam Sarvam. Right? Yeah. Who's doing Bhakti Shastri? <coughs> you're doing Bhakti Shastri? Yes, you're doing Bhakti Shastri? <coughs> Very good. So, yeah, did you learn these two verses? Yes. Isavasyam idam sarvam Isavasyam idam sarvam Yadkin cha jagatyam jagat Yadkin cha jagatyam jagat Tena chaktena punjataha Tena chaktena punjataha Magrida kashasvadhanam all right, who's going to chant? Chant? the translation, everything animate or inanimate that is within the universe is controlled and owned by the Lord. One should therefore accept only those things necessary for himself which are set aside as his quota and one should not accept other things knowing well to whom they belong. <coughs> so the, an important lesson, key word is avashya, ishavashya, ishavashya. Right, we want to make an ishavashya society. So that means a society with God in the center. Isha means 
by the Lord, Isha. Just like this book that we're studying, the Ishopanishad. Ishopanishad, it's the Upanishad about Isha, about God. The knowledge which brings one closer to God. So Isha means the Supreme Lord and Avashya means owned and controlled. So Isha Vashya society is a society in which we understand everything is owned and controlled by God, by Krishna. Everything is Krishna's property. Right? Everything, everything animate and inanimate, everything living and everything which has no consciousness. Every, you know, there's conscious living entities and there's unconscious entities, just like the table doesn't have any consciousness. But you all have consciousness, we are, we are all conscious beings. Even the, the dogs have consciousness and the, the birds and, and the trees, Tulsi, they are conscious, they have consciousness. So the, but, but the table, the, the chair, the floor, they don't have consciousness. So there's two kinds of prakriti. Para prakriti meaning the spiritual energy. Things like animals and pa apara prakriti. Two kinds of prakriti. Prakriti means nature. Whose nature? Whose nature? Huh? You are Prakriti. Who, who's Prakriti are you? Who's the, the proprietor? Krishna. Krishna, right. Krishna is the proprietor. He's everything is, we said Isha Vashya. Isha Vashya. Everything is owned and controlled by the Supreme Lord. So, he controls the Prakriti. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna talks about Prakriti. And there's two Prakriti, Para and Apara. Para meaning superior, meaning <coughs> living entities, the animals, the trees, the birds, the humans. We are all para prakriti. And apara prakriti is the material energy. No con no life, right? The table, no consciousness. You know, I stand upon your toe, you go, ow! You know, you feel it, right? But we stand on the table, the table doesn't complain. No consciousness. We walk on the floor, the floor doesn't complain. If we walk on you, <laughs> you'll complain. So there's a difference, right? The difference. Although we are all Prakriti, there's a difference. Why? We have consciousness and the other things no consciousness. So in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes Prakriti. It's, the, the, it's told about in the seventh chapter. Lord, I was speaking about it yesterday. Remember the elements of the material nature? Five, how many elements? Twenty-four. Huh? Water, twenty-four elements. But how many, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes first of all the Mahabhutis. Five gross. Five gross. What are they? Water, 
right? Bumera po nalo vayu kamano budere vacha ahankara iti yame bina prakritet ashtada bina prakritet ashtada Krishna said my eight separated and it's separated from Krishna it's Krishna's energy but it's separated from him right just like man man and woman may be married but they may be separated right so the relationship is not very close not very close. So Krishna's <coughs> material energy is like that. Bina prakriti astada. He said, my separated energy. So that's the the first the 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 the, the apara prakriti. And then Krishna in the next verse in the Bhagavad Gita he said, Apariyamitastwanyam prakritim vidime param. Jiva Bhuta Mahabaho Yeidam Daryatit. Krishna is saying, beside this, beside this inferior prakriti, there is another energy of mine which are all living entities, the para prakriti. So two kinds of prakriti. The the dead matter with no consciousness and the living entities. And living entity, they have different consciousness. The tree has some consciousness, but not a lot. Because it's a tree, the body of the tree, difficult. The animals, they have some consciousness. You walk around the block. I walked around the block today. I walked. There are some. There were some men sitting, and there were these dogs. Sitting. So the dogs, why are they there? Well, the men will give some food. Yeah. So the dog, that's their consciousness. They're, that's it. As far as their consciousness goes, eating, sleeping, mating, defending. They have consciousness, but limited. Human is different. Human is the highest consciousness. They're meant to use their consciousness to do something good, to make the best use of the life. So everything, animate and inanimate, is Krishna's property. Prabhupada said, there is nothing in the universe that does not belong to either the para or the apara prakriti. Everything is a property of the Supreme Being. We are thinking, this is mine. It's not mine. In Hindi, in, there's a saying, kalihath ayate, kalihath chalo. You know that? Samaste, Hindi samaste. No? Ne samaste. You, it means we come with nothing in the hand. When you're born, you have nothing in the hand. And when you go, take nothing. Right. Whose is it? We're claiming this is mine, this is mine. But if I'm dead, who, who will take it? I cannot say it's mine anymore. No. When we d give up the body, Everybody will take it, I'll take it, Become, becomes mine, right? We fight over it. I want it, I, I should get it. But actually, it's all Krishna's property. It's all Krishna's. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, there's a Bhumi Gita. Are you reading Srimad Bhagavatam? Who's got a set of Srimad Bhagavatam? Have you got Srimad Bhagavatam at home? Yes. yes? Do you read it? Yes. Yes. A, just keep the books there. They, they look nice, right? Never open them. So there's a Bhumi Gita 
in Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhumi is the deity of the earth. What is the form of the Bhumi Giti? Bhumi, she's a cow, right? A cow. This planet belongs to the cows. So Bhumi is the deity of the earth. And the two kings are fighting. This is my land. And now the king said, no, it's my land. And they're fighting. The two kings are fighting and they're killing each other. And mother Bhumi, she's laughing. <laughs> Look at these two kings. They're fighting over the land. The land was here before them, and the land will be here after they go. Whose land is it? Right? So this is the illusion. We are thinking, my property. This is mine. What is mine? Nothing. 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 Who am I? We are nothing. We have nothing. So everything belongs to Krishna. This is is Avashya. To know this. So Prabhupada speaks about Bhagavata communism. Communism. Oh, that's like a, a dirty word, right? <laughs> they would hang the communists or they'd kill them or something. And communists always fighting and like that. Anyway, we have, there's still five communist countries in the world, you know, China, Laos, Korea, Cuba, and some, some other, oh, Vietnam. We're trying to preach there. <laughs> we preach Bhagavata communism. This is the real communism. <laughs> So the communists said, everything belongs to the state. They, just like in China, the land all belongs to the government. It's all the proper, everything belongs to the government. They want to do anything, nobody can stop them. In India, try to do something, always people, no, 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 I have a temple here, you can't do it, no, no. In China, they just, they don't care, you know. Because communism, you know, everything belongs to the state. So, but there's a, a lot of bad things also. The communists say no religion. They say religion is the opium of the people. So don't have any religion. So like that. So they, they, they say everything belongs to the state. But we say everything belongs to God. We never say anything belongs to anyone. This is Bhagavata communism. Everything belongs to God. Of course, China, they don't believe in God. Communists don't, no God. Who is God? No God. But when they get old, when they get near death, then they start to think. Then they they want to know, they want to hear. And it happens. All of these communists, you know, when they're young, they're very idealistic communism. But when they start to get old and they get near death, then they become more religious and they think about God. Sometimes in China, I go to, hosp go to the hospital to see a devotee. So I was in the hospital and there was this one devotee who was in the, in the ward and there were other beds there. So, you know, the devotee was near to death, so we wanted to do some prayers for her. So we were offering prayers and we were a bit worried about the other people. But all the other people said, no, no, it's okay, we also, we also pray. <laughs> They were all, because they were all sick also, so they were also praying, you know. So like that, when, when there's problems, you know, when we've got gold, when we are happy, we think of our money. But when we're in distress, then we pray to God, right? When they're giving out the exam results, then we pray to God, right? <laughs> See, 
like that. People think of God when they're in distress. So Bhagavata communism, to understand everything belongs to God. Nothing is ours. We have to understand this fact. So that is perfect Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada said, we should not take anything neglectfully. Neither we should be careless to take care of Krishna's property, Krishna's living beings, Krishna's house, Krishna's temple, Krishna's business. You know, I remember when I was a young devotee, we used to go for Sankirtan. And we would go, we you know, had a car, we'd go off in the car. But practically every day there would be some problem with the car. The one who had the car yesterday, you know, because it's the temple's car. So we get a different car every day. One day this car, next day another car. So the one who had the car yesterday didn't put any petrol in the car and there was no water in the radiator and the tires were flat and he to put air in the... Oh, it's Krishna's car, you know. When it's our car, then we take care of it. But when it's Krishna's... Oh, it's Krishna's car. It's Krishna Prabhu. It's Krishna's temple. Yeah. We don't worry. We don't take care. So that, that's the Prabhupada's talking about that, you see. We cannot be careless, we have to take care of Krishna's property. We see it. So that's important. Don't think, because it's not mine, why I should worry. It's not mine. But when it's mine, I'll take care of it. Everything Krishna's. Isavashyam idam sarvam yadkincha jagatyam gad. If we think like that, then that is perfect Krishna consciousness. Everything is Krishna's. That is Krishna consciousness. And then the other half, tena chak tena bunjita. Tena. By, by him. Chaktena, set apart, quota, bunjataha, you should accept. Meaning, one should therefore accept only those things necessary for himself, which are set aside as his quota. Right? What is my quota? <laughs> When we would do Sankirtan, we would have a quota. They give us a quota. You have to distribute five books. You have to distribute seven books. You have to distribute <coughs> ten books. Everyone would have a quota. So, we have a quota. We should not take more than whatever. How much is our quota? I mean, we, we, we shouldn't be greedy to get more than what we need, right? Sometimes, how many pairs of shoes do you keep at home? Huh? How many shoes you've got at home? Uh, quite a few, right? We go to the home, oh, I, I, you go in somebody's room, it's like a shoe shop. <laughs> I never saw so many shoes. And you open the wardrobe, wow, so many clothes, huh? so many. And w did you ever wear them all? But, mm, no, hardly ever. <laughs> this is the problem, you see. Quota. What is our quota? We know the ladies, they have so many things. Right? The jewelry, the ornaments, the clothes, and there has to be new clothes all the time, right? I want new, I want new, I want new. 
and the old ones you have also. And you, you don't give them away. You keep, no, that's mine. Don't give it. Hey, that's mine. Why are you taking it? You never wore it in five years. But, no, that's mine. Yes. We get, we have to un just take what we need. Don't keep more. And you can make your life very simple. Very simple. Your mind will be peaceful. You don't have to worry about so many things. The more you have, the more you worry about it. Think, that's mine. Who told you could take mine? We should take only those things necessary. So this is an important point. <coughs> <laughs> we say, uh, select incidents where solutions would be achieved if the Ishyavasha principle were to be applied. Right? Uh, so Ishyavasha principle is to understand everything belongs to God. So you get incidents, we get problems coming up. You know, we're claiming, hey, this is my land. No, no Prabhu, it's not your land. No, it's my land. And you, like I said, two kings fighting. We got two countries fighting. We got Russia fighting Ukraine. You know, you got, all the time you get these problems. China fighting India. Fighting, why are they fighting? Some mountain, nobody lives there, but they, you know, they said, this is our mountain. No, no, this is our mountain. They make a war out of it, you know. People die, so many soldiers out there to protect the mountain. So, if, if we understand everything belongs to God, there'll be no problem. We can solve all the problems of the world. Prabhupada said, not more than what we require. Be satisfied. Don't always want more. Whatever wealth is there within this universe, all belong to God. And we are, as sons of God, we have got right to take advantage of this wealth but not more than what I require. That's all. This is spiritual communism. If you take more, then you become punishable. This is the law of nature. <coughs> if you take more, then you get punished. Don't take more. We just take what we require. Right? The money belongs to God. It's all Him. Just take what... Of course, how do we know what's enough for us? That's the problem. What's enough for us? Say, no, it's not enough. No, I need more. No, I always need no. So, anyway, we have to try to control the senses, to minimize our demands. Live simply. The simple living means we can have high thinking. But we want complicated living, simple thinking. So this is Bhagavata communism, the spiritual communism, to see everything belonging to God. So some areas in your life where you may be challenged in applying this principle. It may come even, you know, we spoke about clothing, right? You can have so many clothes and shoes. Then it, come, it can be also mobile phones, you know, people have mobile phones. How many mobile phones do you keep? You know? Just one? Yeah. Uh -huh. And then we have also, we have food. How much food do we need to eat? Right? 
How many times do we need to eat every day? Her father eats only one meal a day. Right? Her father eats only one meal a day. He can eat some crackers when he's hungry. So, you can live like that. Some people can eat, but other people want more. Eat twice, eat three times, still hungry, want more. Three, we, need, we have to be careful. In Singapore, one of the devotees' daughter was going to school there. Teacher sent a message home to the mother. Don't give your daughter so much rice. <laughs> I thought, well, that, that's a very, very kind teacher, right? <laughs> a teacher sent the message home to the mother saying, Don't give your daughter so much rice. Huh? And made a, and the mother cut down the rice and the daughter lost weight, you know, and made a difference. That's a kind teacher, you know, caring like that, you know. So, sometimes like that, you know, we think we need so much, we don't need, actually we can do with a lot less. So to try to simplify our life. When people give you things, then you have to give them away, give them to other people. <laughs> Just like uh, one time we were doing Rathi Atran in this one town in India. and. It, it was in Punjab and they, they had a lot of cloth shops and they were selling these chatters everywhere. So it was a, quite a cold day and we were doing Rathiatra and so one man in, from the shop came out and gave me a chatter. So he gave me a chatter. So I thought, I didn't really want this chatter. I gave it to one of the brahmacharis. So further down the road, another man came and gave me a chara. <laughs> and so I gave it to another brahmachari. <laughs> and I, and the many, many shops, yeah, they were all giving me chadars, so I could give them. And all the brahmacharis got chadars. I was able to give them to all the brahmacharis. So that's nice, you know. Distribute. Don't accumulate. Distribute. So we have to do like that, minimize our supply, our resources. How could our society be improved through application of the Ishavasya or Bhagavata communism principle? If we understand everything belongs to God, certainly Everyone will be happy, everyone will be working together joyfully. Just like in the beginning of our Krishna consciousness movement, everyone was living together in the temple, right? Kripa Sindhu Prabhu, when he was a young brahmachari, Plum Estate, is it? Were you from the Plum Estate? Yeah, Plum Estate. Boy. Plum Estate met several <coughs> brahmacharis were there and they joined, became devotees and all lived together in the ashram. <coughs> and everybody shares what the, the laundry we would put, we had a, we had a, a thing called the merge. The, <laughs> everybody would put their clothes into this one box, you see, and then somebody would take all the clothes and go and do the laundry. And they, and they come back with the, the merge, you know, and they hang it all up to dry. Yeah. So everybody, nobody had even their own cloth, their own cloth, you know. We just, we just shared everything. We shared, that was how we began the movement. In those days we were all living together and we, we lived together and we cooked together, ate together. Every, the, all the money, whatever money we had, all went, it was all Krishna's money, you know, whatever money we had, we give it to the temple and it's all used for the temple expenses. Nobody kept any money. When I got initiation from Prabhupada, I didn't have any money. <laughs> I 
I didn't have any money to give Prabhupada and Guru Dakshin. In, in fact, many of us got initiated. I got initiated, there was also Subhak Swami and the Mahavishnu Swami, we all got initiated the same time. There was about fifteen of us all got initiated that day. And Prabhupada said, Prabhupada called the temple president to his room. He said, you know, I gave all these men initiation, none of them gave me any Guru Dakshin. <laughs> A temple president said to him, he said, Prabhupada, they don't, they don't have any money. <laughs> we didn't have any money, we were all just living together. We gave everything we had to the temple. And so Prabhupada just laughed. He said, he said, and so anyway, we went on Sankirtan in the afternoon and whatever we collected on Sankirtan, we gave that to Prabhupada. <laughs> so this was how we lived together. Hmm. Okay, that's mantra too. Okay, any question? So what did you learn? We're, we're speaking about this... Uh, We spoke about Purnam, Om Purnam, right? Yes. Everything is complete. Everything from Krishna is complete. And then we, sh we should also be connected to Krishna. Then we are also complete. And if we're not complete, it's because we're not connected to Krishna. So we have to keep the connection. How do you get connected? How do you get connected to Krishna? Chant. Chanting, yes. And reading the books. Worshipping Krishna. Do you, you do arti every day? Yes. You do arti every day? Yes. yes. You do kirtan every day? Yes. Huh? Honest? Honest. <laughs> kirtan, very important. The family which chants together, prays together, will stay together. Right? So you have to chant. So, and then we learned the, about the Ishyavasya. Right? Ishya means? And Ishyavasya means? Hmm? Everything is owned and controlled by the Lord, right? And then we heard about prakriti, right? Yes. Two kinds of prakriti. Yes. Para prakriti. Para. Who is the para prakriti? Yes. The living entity, superior, right? Yes. And the apara, the inferior. Inferior, yes. right? Mm. The wood, the table, the floor. No consciousness, apara. So, we should understand everything is Krishna's property and just take what you need. Don't take more than what you need. Try to live simply in the mode of goodness. You minimize the bodily demands, right? Don't keep a lot of things, just try to keep life. You know, sometimes, sometime, you know, when I was studying, you know, you go to college and you study it, you, you had so many books, you know, yes. you had so many books and, oh my, you know, one year, two years, three years, four years, oh my, so many books and, and I'm thinking, oh no, I owe oh, that book, oh yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. But when you graduate, after you finish it, Get rid of them, you know. <laughs> Get rid of them. God. Useless. Oh, useless books, you know. <laughs> so, sometimes it's like that, you know. We're so attached. We get so. We think, I need this. I need that. But then, you know, a few years later, you think, oh, you know. This is useless. <laughs> Why I'm keeping this? Throw it away, get rid of it, give it away or something. 
So like that, we have to keep ourselves, keep the heart clean. Don't be attached to so many unnecessary. Be attached to Krishna. Be attached to chanting. Okay? Hare Krishna.